Hey there, I'm Swiss Make, and in this video we are going to look at the algorithm for a popular interview question, moving zeros to the end of an array. So in this video we're going to look at the problem statement, we're going to look at a couple of solutions that aren't completely optimal but we would try to use on our way to get to the optimal solution. So they, they're good solutions, they just don't have the right time complexity or space complexity that we really want. And after that, we'll look at the actual best solution, which is not too bad, but it's a little bit tricky if you don't understand what's going on. So um, in this video, I'm actually going to be drawing out exactly how you would be moving things in the array. And we've got the code right here in the blog post, but I'm going to be drawing out how intuitively and in theory these algorithms work, which is a lot nicer because if you understand the theory, you can just write the code really easily. So that's what we're going to be doing in this video. And we'll finally look at some edge cases that you should keep in mind to make sure that your code is bulletproof. And then maybe at the end, I will t show you that I'm going to be doing a bunch of these algorithm questions. This might be a series, so I'll explain that at the end of the video in case you're interested in more of these questions. So all of these, all of this code and everything I'm doing is right here on my blog post, and there'll be a link to it below this video if you want to read this code yourself, because I might not actually, I'm not going to read this code in this video, so you should do that afterward. You can click the link below this video to get here, and while you're down there, click the subscribe button for this YouTube channel. Thanks. So the question, the problem statement, if you were in an interview and you got this suddenly, is given an array of integers, move all zeros to the end of the array. Ideally, use no extra space and keep the non-zero element stable, meaning order is preserved. So what this means is, let's say we have an array like 2, 0, 1, 5, 0. What we want to do is move these zeros to the end of the array so that our final product is something like 2, 1, 5, 0, 0. So you see these zeros, the number of zeros that we have are at the end, but the order is also preserved, which is what stableness is, meaning the 2, 1, 5 that we saw before, that same order is right here on the left-hand side of this array. So that's basically the problem statement. It's not too bad. Um, so the naive approach here, attempt number one that we would try to solve if this were an actual interview, the thing we should think about most, and I'm switching to Microsoft Paint in a smaller version right here so that we can actually visualize this, is moving zeros to the right after traversing the array from left to right. So if we were to go through this array left to right, we would basically look for zeros, and then every time we see one, we would shift it right. As, as, as best as we can. So if we go through this array, this is what the algorithm is going to do, and that's what this block of code right here is going to do, is look at this number. Oh, it's a 2. It's a non-zero, so I don't have to do anything. It's probably good. Look at this number. Oh, it's a 0. That's bad. So what we really want to do is find a, another place to swap this with on the right. So we would look through this entire range and see if there's anything we can swap with, if possible. So we'd go through each number and, oh look, this is a non-zero. So what we want to do is swap this with the zero. And so this becomes the one and this becomes zero. So right now the left hand of the array up to this element that we were on is good so far. And then we would just keep moving through the rest of the array as possible. So we'd go through here again and, oh no, it's another zero. So what we have to do this time is once again look through the rest of the elements and we, we need to see if there's a non-zero to swap with. So we would see, oh look, after looking here, this five is a non-zero, so we can do the swap. And so we switch again, and the five moves here, and the zero's here. And actually, that's it for this particular array, it's done. So we've got a two, one, five, zero, zero. Now, this is a really easy solution. It basically just requires two for loops and just checking if a number is zero or not, which is actually great for an interview. You should actually do this in an interview. But um, it's not the best time complexity because if you look at the code, which I've got right here, you basically have two for loops that's constantly looking at like basically the entire length of the array in the worst case. So it is stable, if you can see right here. The time complexity is order n squared, which isn't good. The good thing about this, though, is that it uses no extra space. You're just using this array itself, and that's it. So that's attempt number one. It's OK. It, it's a little bad on the time complexity. But let me see. Can I paste? Yes, OK, great. So that's the attempt number one. It's not the best, but it was really easy to do, and you can code it up really quickly. It's really intuitive. The next thing to do would be to create a new array and place the elements into it selectively. So in that case, we could make another array, and I'm going to draw this out. Hopefully, I can draw straight. So 
we've got our original array right here, and we're going to create a new array that's going to be basically the one we want to keep at the end of everything. So we've got five elements here. And basically what we want to do is we want to go through the original array, and we'll use the color red for this. And every time we see a non-zero, we understand that, oh, this is great. We want this to on the left. So we basically push this onto the new array. So we see this two, it's a non-zero, push it into the new array. We see a zero, we don't really like zero, so we'll just move on to the next number. We see a one, oh, one is good. We should push that onto the new array. Um, we see a five, we move on, we see a five, we push that onto the new array. And so we see a zero, we're not going to do anything with that. And so our left-hand side of this new array is good. The only thing we need to do is to use a different color for this, fill in the rest of the slots with zeros. And intuitively, this is really easy. This is actually kind of like what a sorting algorithm, one of them, I forgot the name, does. Um, it just basically fills something in and then fills in the rest of it later. Um, I think that's like a merge sort. It just selectively does this. So this one is actually pretty easy too. Um, you saw exactly what we did, just create a new array, push items or put them in the correct index, whatever kind of language syntax you're using is going to do. Um, and then at the end, fill in the rest with all zeros. Um, you can see the code right here. It's a simple for loop. If you look at the stableness, it is stable. The time complexity is order n, because we're only going through this original array once, just one time. Um, and then after that one time, we just fill in these zeros afterward. The problem is our space complexity requirement is bad. We've got order and space complexity because whatever size the original array was, we need to allocate space for an entire new array of the same size. So time complexity is kind of good this time. It's order n, but space complexity isn't great because now we've got a duplicate of this whole array. It's not in place or anything like that. So that fails that requirement. Still a kind of good solution. It was actually really easy to code up. Um, it's really easy to understand intuitively, but let's see if we can do this last one and just make this really, you know, do this the right way um, with order and time, order one space and it being stable. And let's see, can I paste? Yes, okay. So this is the final solution. This is the best solution. This is what you would strive to do in an interview. Honestly, I think this would be hard depending on the time limit. So just try to understand it now. And if you can take this concept and try to keep it in your mind to use it for other problems, that'd be great. So the ideal solution is to do some sort of special index tracking. So we want to keep this array in place and not like create another array and just keep everything here. But the, I, the key thing to take away here is that we care about moving all of our good elements, the non-zero elements, to the left in their correct positions. That's really what we want to do. In the same array that we have, we want to move everything to the left where it belongs. And the way we do this is by basically creating a special index that will track where to write elements to that's going to end up being the count of the non-zero elements. And I know that doesn't make a lot of sense, and this code is actually looks really easy. If you look at this code, it's just a few lines. So if you get the intuition right in this diagram, it'll help us out. So what we want to do is we want to go through each element one by one. So we look at Oh no, let's go back to our pencil. So we look at element two, and what we say here is, oh, um, first thing we do is we actually initialize an index, and that's basically be the index we're gonna be writing to at every element, and it's gonna start out at zero. So index is zero, and then we're gonna go through each element of the array. So we're gonna to go to this first one, and we're gonna say, oh, this is a non-zero. We actually want it to be as left as possible. So we're gonna put it at the index that we're trying to write to all the time. And so we're going to overwrite this with a 2, um, which actually effectively doesn't do anything. But what we do next is we increment our index and say, OK, element 0 is good. The next index that we would care about writing to is one more than that, which is 1. So we increment our index to be 1, and we say index 0 is covered. It's good. Next, we come to this, and this is a 0. We don't care about zeros, um, so we're just going to skip it. We're not going to do anything to it. And then we come to the next element, which is 1, and we say, OK, you know what? This 1 is a non-zero. We actually want to place it on the left because we care about having it later on. So where do we write it to? The index that we're going to write it to is index 1. So what we do is we say, oh, index 1, 
we are going to overwrite whatever is there. In this case, it happens to be a zero. And we're going to put our element one there. So now we know so far our left hand side up to index one is good. And the next element we would write to is index one. So that completes the operation. The operation is overwrite to the last index, with the, in this case is index one, with the number from this element, which is the number one. And then we increment the index so that the next iteration were good. So now we come over to this five and we say, oh, you know what? Five is a non-zero. We care about it. We want to move it to the left where it can go. Where do we move it to? Oh, this next index that we're going to write to is a two. So index two in this case is the one we write to. Oh, sorry. It's not actually a two. So we're going to write element five in index two, and then we're going to update index to be three. Sorry, I ran out of space. So the next place we would write to would be to index three. Then we go to this element, the last element in the array, and we say it's a zero. We don't care about writing it to the left. So what we do is just ignore it. So right now our array is two. Let's do a different color, actually. Let's do orange. So our, our array right now is two, one, five, five, zero. Notice we have this overlap right here with this five because we don't care about the leading in this case. We just care about overwriting and moving things we care about to the left. Um, so what we could do in this case now that we have this part of the array left is we know, oh, so um, we know how many non-zeros there are left. We know that the next element that we were going to write to would be element three. So basically we can go through the entire rest of the array and just fill these elements with zeros. And that's basically the algorithm. So to summarize, um, and you can read the code if this doesn't make sense to you, um, I highly recommend it anyway, because you're going to have to write this code eventually. To summarize the algorithm, though, is we keep track of the index that we want to write to because we care about writing all non-zeros to the left. The whole point of this is find an element. If you care about it, write it in its correct position on the left. Um, and so we just go through the array. I don't like that color, it looks weird. So we basically just go through the array, and every time we find a non-zero, we write it to the index that we, we care about so far, that we know is good, or that needs to be updated to that point. And then we increment that index for the next iteration, and we keep doing that. And that's basically it. So we, we just care about filling in this left-hand side, and then afterward, we fill in the rest with zeros, because we don't really care about it. So we overwrite things. That, that's the way to think about it. Um, the time Is this stable? Yes, because everything gets moved to the left. Is the time complexity good? It's order n, which is because we're only going through this array basically twice. We're going to go through once to write 215 on the left-hand side. And then we might go through one more time just to write the zeros in for anything that didn't get covered. So that's order n, just two traversals. I mean, the space complexity is order one. So this seems a little dangerous because um, we're not creating anything extra. We're just overwriting things in the original array, which is great. We don't use any extra memory. So that's basically the algorithm for how to move zeros to the end of an array. The final thing we're going to do in this video, besides the closing remarks about algorithm questions, is the edge cases. So you can see this great. Um, actually, I'll make this like super big for you. And I'll move this to the right. Oh, I, wasn't, I shouldn't show that. Um, so edge case one, an array with only zeros, our algorithm covers that. An array with no zeros, our algorithm also covers that. It's not really that special. An array starting with a zero, um, that's also not too hard. That's not too bad in this case. And an array that ends with a zero. Actually, our array ended with a zero. Nothing bad happened. So our algorithm is pretty good, but you should make sure in an interview that you know, you cover these edge cases. So the final thing I want to mention in this video is that this is um, the final code for this I have on GitHub. If you go to GitHub, you can see this repository that I made and the source code is right here in main.cpp. You can run it if you want and there are instructions on what you would do just to make sure that you can actually write this. Because the whole point is understanding in this video, but you should actually look at the code too and understand it, that you could write it yourself. I wrote it in C++. But this is also going to be a series that I'm going to start. Um, and you can see if there's a playlist for this. I'm going to try to create a YouTube playlist so that you can easily access all the videos in this series for algorithm interview questions. Um, so if you have an algorithm interview question that you want answered that you don't see on my blog, um, 
feel free to ask it in the comments. Otherwise, subscribe so that you can see other videos like this on algorithm interview questions because they're kind of an important topic. And it's good to practice all the time and see how these things work out. Um, so I'm Source Make. If you like this, like this video, leave a comment on anything else you want to see, and also feel free to subscribe. I don't know if I said that already. So thanks for watching. Good luck.